a new CEO mind. A new CEO mind. I work in business primarily with chief executives and I work on business strategy. Uh, and several decades ago, I used to play a lot of football. And these two are connected. Um, and it's led me to the conclusion that we need a new mind for the chief executives um, and for other leaders uh, who hold power. I think we have a lot to thank our chief executives for. They carry uh, quite a lot of responsibility uh, for their businesses and the people that they work with and the societies within which they operate. So there are lots of pressures on them. And when they come to um, develop and implement a strategy, there's a lot riding on it. Um, so they need cooperation. They can't do it by themselves. We live uh, in a culture which is primarily designed to take us from zero to hero. And we do need to develop as we start life uh, as a young person and we develop through the first 10 years and then the next 10 years in our teens. We do need to develop a certain amount of character um, which um, is going to allow us to demonstrate our capabilities and our interaction in the material world. So this seems to be a natural process that we all go through. However, we can't survive individually. It's, it's more of a cooperation with other people. And this point is brought home when we uh, play team games. Now, when I was young, I played football and we just had the World Cup. And um, the thing about playing football when you're young is, certainly in my case, is I wanted to be the Pele. I wanted to be Garincha. I wanted to be the person who scored spectacular goals. Uh, and I would focus on that a lot. Um, but when, uh, in, when I was 18, I was playing in a school side that became the champions, champion, the, the top school in Yorkshire. And at the beginning of that year, the coach changed me from a number nine position to a centre back. So from centre forward to centre back, more or less. Um, and so to play in the team, I had to learn a new role, but I also had to manage a certain amount, initially a certain amount of disappointment that I wasn't going to be the hero. I was in very much a service role at centre-back. Um, the point is though, we had a great season uh, and we did win the Yorkshire Schools final. Um, and that was also my best year in terms of being scouted by what is now a premiership club, Wolves. Um, and it happened because we worked as a team. So when I left college and started work, I expected, I knew what a team could do, and I, for some reason, expected people to work together uh, my first job was with um, a subsidiary of Grand Metropolitan and Maxwell Joseph was merging two brewers, a West End brewer and an East End brewer together. And I saw firsthand the destruction of many 
sort of careers really and brands it was a destruction it was a destructive process and I couldn't help but notice that no one really was paying attention to playing together as a team there were cliques and there were individuals so I suppose the outcome is not surprising I thought it might be a one-off but as I went through my career I noticed this. it wasn't um, it was the norm for people to want to take care of themselves and or become the hero. So the zero to hero culture did not really promote teamwork. Although it's necessary as part of our development. Um, but there comes, it, there comes a point where it doesn't work. Now, in the businesses that I've been working with, I have had the pleasure of observing teams that work and management people, groups of, that don't work. And it's enormously disappointing because we reach the same ceiling each time as individuals or groups of individuals decide to obstruct each other in their not follow the strategy to try to win but to defend sometimes indefensible positions because their pride has been impacted and I have seen it more than enough to know that in the these management groups and sometimes with the chief executive, this needs to change. As evidence on a wider scale, I can look at the politics in my country, the political leaders, and I see a day by day erosion of simple values that enable people to work together and give them some hope. It seems that the leaders are not necessarily concerned about the nation they are leading, but more concerned with where they stand in the rankings. You know, you may think I'm exaggerating, um, yeah, but I don't think I am. And the main issue is identification. The main issue is identification. The people that I work with sometimes become identified with their position, their power, their material goods, and they lose sight of their responsibility to the organization. Now we do encourage in the commercial world identification. Brands are a good example of identification. Millions if not billions, billions are spent creating identification at the level of the brand. And many hours are spent writing speeches that will create identification at the level of culture. So it does become difficult to cooperate and the way forward is for our chief executives and anyone else who is chief executive of their own life to move from the culture of zero to hero and reverse it and go in the direction of hero to zero. This will uh, take the type of leadership that we experience probably for ourselves and certainly in the companies we work with to a different place. I'm not saying that's easy and I'm not going to give the any sort of practical tips about how to do that here 
but I'm just announcing really that we need a new mind, a new CEO mind, which involves moving from hero to zero, to cooperation.